What's up, everybody? My name is Shane Kohler, and this is The Conscious Love Show. Thanks so much for joining me here, where each week I'm sharing true-to-life insights and experiences from my journey and how I've created the loving and committed partnership I have today. I answer your questions and have live discussions with you so I can support you in your specific situation. And I bring in experts and people who know their stuff so we can all learn from their perspectives. Thanks again for checking out the show. Please subscribe on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on the most. And I would love it so much if you'd leave a review and tell people what you think of us. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at The Living Relationship to connect more closely. And I'm grateful to be supporting you on your journey to love. So welcome, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Conscious Love Show. As always, Shane Kohler here. I am your host. Uh, Pleasure to be back with you today. It's always exciting to jump into another episode. And yeah, just thanks for being back with me. Um, Something I wanted to just put out there before we jump in today, and we got a lot we're going to cover today, but before we get into it, I wanted to speak specifically about um, the Inspired Love Program. So uh, many of you are aware that uh, the the Inspired Love Program is really the the best way to work with me. And it's where we spend three months together. We go through some of my deepest processes. I really teach you everything I have to share as we go through this program together. And um, what I really want to say today is just to give you an update. So um, it's been a while since I've spoken about the program. And what we've been doing since the last time I've been telling you about it is we've been updating, revising, improving. Um, we've been really changing the structure of it. So what's really happening now is it's going from like a three-month membership to a lifetime membership. And um, all the things we do in the program, like uh, the, the core curriculum, we do breath work, we do different kinds of meditations, we do um, different kinds of workshops, different kinds of somatic healing processes. So um, rather than it being a type of program where you go through this one time and then you're done, um, we're converting it to a lifetime model. And so what it's really going to be is, yes, there is going to be the core curriculum that you will go through when you join the program, but you're going to have lifetime access to coaching sessions. You're going to have lifetime access to workshops, somatic healing processes, breath work. So really, it's kind of like once you join the community, you're in. And um, whatever we're offering and as much as we develop the program and, you know, all of it, like you're going to basically be able to be a part of it for life. So um, our aim here was really to increase the value, increase the level of support that we can offer to the students. And again, rather than it being you come in, we, you work with us for a couple months and then you're done. It's going to be like you come in and you stay for as long as you want to. And all the tools and resources and workshops and things that we offer Um, you're going to be able to continue utilizing that for as long as it's useful to you, right? Um, So just the the level of support, the level of engagement, the level of um, value to you is just going to be so much greater than it has been in the past. And we're really excited to roll out this new version of the program where we're going to just be able to connect with you and and share so much more with you. So all of that being said... um, what I what I want to let you know right now is that the program, the new version of the program, will officially open on November 1st. And um, between now and then, actually, uh, if you want to join before October 1st, so if you want to join in the next couple of weeks, we actually have an early bird special where you can save about 50% on the price of tuition. So that's a really, really awesome way to uh, to get started there. Um And uh, then after that, you know, the program will be the full price. But regardless of that, there is going to be incredible value in the program. There's just going to be so much available. So um, anyway, I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. I will share more about it as we as we get closer and as we lead up to it. But um, what I want to say right now is is definitely if you're interested, um, the best thing to do is just shoot me a message on Instagram. um, Let me know that you're interested. And then what we can do is... uh, we can go ahead and get you set up with one of our team members who can basically break everything down for you and let you know how it all works. All right. So that being said, um, those of you who are live with me, if you want to just shoot me a message on Instagram, those of you who maybe will hear this on the podcast, uh, if you want to just shoot me an email at Shane and Fatima at the living relationship.com, or you can shoot me a message on Instagram. That'll work too. And uh, we'll get you set up again. Anyone who wants to join before October 1st, you're going to get an incredible deal and be able to save about 50% on the tuition of the program. Um, So definitely a lot of incentive to jump in now versus later. 
Um, okay, all that being said, I want to transition and get into today's podcast episode. And I'm, I'm very excited about today's episode because um, what I want to share with you today is actually a process that I have been practicing myself um, for quite a while now. I, I'd say at least a year, at least a year, but um, probably even I mean, probably a lot more than that, to be honest with you. But I've been practicing this for at least a year now. And I, I would say in the year that I've been working with this practice, it has evolved for me. It has become deeper. It has become more powerful. It has gotten into places within myself that I didn't even really know were there. Um, the amount of freedom that I've been able to experience with this practice has become increasingly powerful, right? Like just it, like the, the longer I work with this, the more it opens up for me. And to simply put it this way, uh, the, the, what I've come to, what I've come to call this practice, and it's something, uh, I think many teachers talk about things like this, so I wouldn't claim to have invented this, but it's something that I definitely took suggestions from different teachers, different books I've read, different therapists and coaches I've worked with. And I've kind of integrated all of that and made it my own. And, and what I would call this is that it's a practice of deep feeling, or another way to say it could be a practice of letting go. And I first, before I get into the practice itself and how to do the practice, what I really want to speak into first is just why we need this practice, right? Because if, if you don't know why you need it, then doing it doesn't really mean anything to you, right? So why do we need this practice? And what I really want to talk about is the process of accumulation. And there's a, there's a coach I worked with earlier this year. Many of you have probably heard of him. His name is Peter Crone. He's, uh, I'd say probably one of the top life coaches in the world, you know, brilliant guy, brilliant coach. He has the amazing ability to just get in there with people and kind of get right to what their limiting beliefs are and just break their beliefs apart in a single conversation. Um, it's, it's really cool being able to watch Peter work. Um, but I had the opportunity to work with him earlier this year and I went through a health mastermind with him. And in the health mastermind, he was breaking down uh, the study of Ayurveda, which um, some of you may or may not be familiar with. But Ayurveda is a, an ancient practice, an ancient study, a, really a science of health and wellness and um, different body types and how different body types relate with different foods and things like that. But um, what I found really profound about the process of Ayurveda is when it talks about disease in the body or it talks about illness. It says that illness is the result of accumulation. And so basically the way the philosophy works, and again, this is a, an ancient philosophy. It's been around for thousands and thousands of years. And it's, uh, it's really, I mean, its implications are profound in what it can mean for us when we really understand the, the practice of Ayurveda and, and what it provides. But um, what I want to really speak into here is this idea of accumulation and how all disease or all illness is the result of accumulation in the body. Now, normally when we hear disease, we think of things like autoimmune disorders or cancer or, uh, I mean, you know, add to the list, right? All, all, all different types of illnesses. And that's definitely true, right? Uh, that definitely is relevant here. But I think even more than that, what I speak about and in, in how it shows up in my work is dealing with things like anxiety, dealing with things like depression, dealing with things like fear, dealing with things like uh, in dating or in relationships, the kinds of things that manifest or show up as discomfort, as frustration, as anger, as scarcity, all these different types of things that show up in our love lives, in our intimate relationships are really the result of accumulation. So what do I mean when I talk about accumulation? I mean, things we pick up along the way. And it's an interesting thing to really realize that, uh, you know, if you follow my work, if you listen to the podcast, a lot of what I'm talking about today is not new, right? We, we accumulate things in childhood, right? And I've talked many times about growing up with your parents and whatever kind of environment you grew up in with your parents, you accumulated a lot in that environment, right? You accumulated ideas about yourself. You accumulated certain emotions, certain feelings, certain habits and patterns and ways of dealing with things. Um, when you got into elementary school and middle school and high school, 
and you got to know different peers and you made friends and you lost friends and you experienced acceptance and rejection, and humiliation and love and all these different kinds of things. You're accumulating the entire time, right? The entire time that you're going through all your life experiences, you're accumulating things. And what I've found as I've been working with this practice is not only did I accumulate things in my past, but I am actively accumulating things in the present. And so every single day, you know, from the things I watch on TV and hear in music, from the things I see when I go to the gym or when I go out in public or the, the things people say or the things people do or the, the interactions that I have with my wife or the interactions I have with friends or colleagues or clients or things that are going on in my business or like, I mean, just literally the, the list is endless. Literally anything you experience you are accumulating aspects of that. And what ends up happening is the things that we accumulate, we end up holding them in our bodies and we end up carrying them with us. And these accumulations that we pick up manifest, and let me, let me just say this way because we accumulate a lot, but, but really when we talk about accumulation, we are talking about more of the negative stuff. We are talking about more of the fear, the sadness, the anxiety, the stress, the pressure, the fear of the future, right? Like all, all of these things are more of what we accumulate, what we hold on to, because the positive stuff, and there, there's a breath worker, um, her name's Lori Reyes. She actually, in the Inspired Love Program, she's the one who comes in and facilitates the breath work. Um, she's amazing. I've been working with her for, I've been working with her for about 10 years and she's been doing it for like 30 years. Um, but, you know, she, I, I got this from her and it makes perfect sense to me. She said, you know, the positive impressions or the joyful impressions, like when we experience happiness or excitement or joy for life, when we experience those positive impressions, they don't really accumulate because they just kind of move right through us. Right. There's nothing in us that resists those positive impressions. So it's like, whoo, I'm happy. And it just moves right through me. Like I'm not holding on to that. I'm not like that. That isn't stressing me out. It's not causing any kind of response in my body where I want to like hold on to it. But the more negative impressions, like the fear and the stress, the anxiety, the worry, the pressure, like the more negative impressions that we experience. Those are the impressions that we really hold on to. The, that's where the accumulation happens. Because when I experience fear in my body, or I experience a rejection or a sadness or a loss or grief or anything like that, when I experience those kinds of repressions in my body, or those kinds of uh, experiences in my body, there's a tendency to like resist a little bit right? There's a tightening that happens. The muscles tighten. You know, I might feel like a shortness of breath in my chest. I might feel like feeling sick to my stomach or it can take different forms. But when I experience those negative impressions, the fear, the sadness, the loss, the grief, all of that, what happens is there's like a restriction in my being. There's a tightening in my being and the experience doesn't move through me. It kind of gets stuck. And this is where accumulation happens. And so as we're going through life, and this has been happening your entire life, since you were a very little child, and maybe you grew up in a household where, you know, maybe your parents were a little bit crazy or a little bit stressed out or a little bit, uh, you know, under pressure and that pressure spilled over onto you. Or maybe you had older siblings, or maybe you were bullied at school, or maybe you were rejected by a friend or a classmate or a boyfriend or girlfriend, or, you know, I mean, fill in the blanks with your own experiences, right? We've all had them, whether they happened at home, whether they happened at school, but wherever you experienced those negative, those fearful impressions, there was a tendency to, and, and if you really, if you really tune into this, you can feel it in your body, right? And, and like, I want you to really even start to pay attention to what do you feel in your body? Because you can feel that tightening happening. You can feel like that holding on. That's like, it's almost like, imagine if you're on a roller coaster and you're, you're riding your way up to the top and you're about to go over that loop and come down, right? Like if you, 
If you think about being on that roller coaster and the feeling that you have going up to the top and you could, it's like bracing yourself, right? Like, you know, something big is coming and you know, you're about to experience a really intense feeling and there's a little bit of fear and anxiety and excitement. And it's all mixed up together. And you're like bracing yourself for the experience, right? So if, if, if you've ever been on a roller coaster, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, the, the feeling I'm talking about is not so different from that, right? Is when, you know, I'll, I'll just use an example from my experience, right? Like I remember my dad was an alcoholic and I've shared about my dad many times, you know, very toxic relationship that I had with him. And I remember being like 13, 14 years old and my dad would sometimes work till nine, 10 o'clock at night. And I remember on those nights when he was working late and we know that he had been drinking all day at work. And we, uh, when I say we, I'm talking about myself and my stepmother and we would be sitting in the living room. Like I'll never forget these nights. Like we were sitting in the living room, like literally just bracing ourselves, knowing he was going to come pulling in the driveway any minute. And we didn't know who was going to walk through the door, right? We didn't know if it was going to be happy, go lucky. Hey, how you doing dad? Or if he was going to be in a bad mood, start throwing shit, start calling people names, start lashing out, right? Like we didn't know who was going to be walking in the door. And so we're sitting there in the living room. Like I, I like you could feel the tension with it. Like, you could cut the tension with a knife, right? I just remember like myself and my stepmom just sitting there in complete silence, knowing that my father was going to come through the door any minute and not knowing who was going to be coming in or what was going to happen, right? And so there's a, there's a tension that builds up in your body when you have experiences like that. Same, similar to when you're going up the roller coaster, you're about to go over the hill, right? There's a tension that builds up in your body. And when you have, had to live with this tension, right? The way I did with my father or the way that many of us have had to in many situations, or if you were in an abusive relationship where you felt similarly with your partner, right? Or if you were, if you were in any kind of situation where you felt that tension, what happens is you start to hold that in your body. And it becomes an accumulation, right? Because you're not releasing it. The feeling is not moving through you, but rather it's something that you tighten, you resist, and then you hold that and you carry that with you. And again, like that can happen with so many different experiences in life. So I don't need to go on and on about it. But wherever you felt that tension in your body and you've been holding on to it, and then you maybe learned when you were young based on living in a certain household or having certain experiences at school, but you learned to tighten and resist those experiences. And then what happens is, as you go through life and as you get older, you continue to tighten and resist and accumulate, right? And so it starts to become a chronic thing where it's not just something that happened to me when I was a little kid. It happened to me when I was a little kid, but then I've continued to relate with life in that way as I continue on and on throughout my life. And so it starts to happen more and more and more. And I start to accumulate more and more and more and more. And resistance starts to become not something I do when I'm afraid, but something I do as a matter of course. It's habitual in my life. And so it's like, you might be getting ready for a date and you might be in resistance even just getting ready for a date. Even just getting yourself dressed, doing your makeup, doing your hair, looking in the mirror, right? And you're in resistance this whole time. And if you really start to check in and you really start to look and observe what's happening in your body in those moments when you feel that fear, like you'll start to see that there is a tightening that's happening. There is a resistance that's happening. There is a holding on that's happening. Like this experience is not moving through you, but it's actually getting stuck inside of you. And like you might be getting ready for a date and you might be resisting that experience, right? You're having some anxiety build up, some fear, right? And you're, and you have thoughts. You're like, I don't know where this is going to go. Am I wasting my time? Is this even worth it? Is this person going to look the way they did in their pictures? Are they going to treat me well? Are they going to be a jerk? Like, am I going to go home feeling completely demoralized tonight? Right? Like all these thoughts are going through your mind. And then the, as these thoughts are going through your mind, 
the tension is building in your body, right? Like it's really important that you start to see how this happens. The thoughts go through your mind. And as the thoughts go through your mind, the tension builds in your body. And as the tension builds in your body, you are holding on. And then what happens is like you get to that date and you think like, oh my God, it was such an awful date. Well, what I want to say, if you showed up to that date in that way, having accumulated all that stuff before the date even began, if you showed up to that date in that way, it was going to be a horrible date before you even got started, before you even met the person, before you even said hello. The course of the rest of the evening had already been determined by the fact that you showed up in a state of resistance, in a state of fear, in a state of tension, not being comfortable, not being relaxed, not being at ease, not feeling good or relaxed inside your body, right? This is the, the, the course of the rest of the evening had already been determined before you even got there. And so what I, what I want to, and I, I hope I'm communicating this clearly. The, the point I want to get across right now is that this started, this process of accumulation started at a time in your life when you had no choice. You were very small. The world was very big. Life was scary. And you started to be afraid. And you started to hold on to stuff in your body. And you started to accumulate negative energy, right? Toxic energy, fearful energy. And then the more you hold this energy in your body, and again, this has been happening throughout your entire life, right? And the more you hold this energy in your body, the more it becomes your natural automatic way of responding to situations in the future. And I'll share just an example. Like, I think my mom is a great example of this and God bless my mom. Like this is so not her fault, right? But my mom has never really been able to progress in life. And the reason for that is because she's, She's been doing this her whole life. So what does this look like? What does this look like for my mom? And, and my mom's never going to hear this, right? So I, I, I wouldn't want to say this to her because I wouldn't want her to feel sad about it, but she's never going to hear this. But what I, like how it's looked for my mother is, you know, she didn't have a lot of guidance when she was young. My grandparents loved her. They cared about her. They were good parents in a lot of respect. But they didn't have this kind of emotional intelligence. They didn't have this kind of awareness. They didn't, you know, they'd never been to a motivational seminar. They had never learned about mindset or anything like that. So my grandparents did not have the ability to pass these things on to my mom, right? They just, it just wasn't in their context. They taught my mom how to survive, right? In fact, the them loving my mother created a lot of resistance in her because based on their life experience, they taught her that the world is scary, that it's hard to make money, that you, that you got to work really hard to survive, that, you know, like, like all these very limiting, fearful ideas about life. And so then here's my mom. She has a child at 19 years old. She's terrified. She's this young girl trying to raise a kid. She's a kid raising a kid in the middle of this big, scary world. She's got to make money, keep a roof over her head, feed herself, feed me. Then she has another kid and she's got to keep like, I mean, like, her, her hole just kind of kept getting deeper and she never really learned the skills to deal with these things. And so what happens is my mom starts accumulating so much and the anxiety that my mom lives with now has prevented her from ever really progressing in life because what, what happened is she holds so much anxiety in her body that Anytime she gets into a situation that is kind of anxiety provoking, she just can't handle it. And so what's happened is her life has like a glass ceiling on it that she can never get past because anytime she approaches a situation that activates that anxiety, she just retreats again. And so my mom has literally been stuck in the same kind of life situation for the last 30 years because she has never been able to work through that anxiety. And as a result of that, you know, she's 
she's been carrying a lot of stress, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety with her. She's also accumulated a lot of weight on her body. So she's, she's carrying all of this trauma with her. And, you know, at, at this point, you know, I, I do everything I can to help her, but, you know, she's been this way a long time. I don't know that she's going to change at this point, right? So I'm using that as an example because I want you to understand how accumulation works. And the more you carry with you, the more of a limitation it becomes, right? The more fear, anxiety, stress, worry, the more you carry that with you, the more of a barrier it becomes. And the more you will project that onto every new life situation. And your life will have limits in every direction. And so what I have, what I have found and, and what I really want to get into today is this process of what I call deep feeling or letting go. And I started working with this, uh, again, I would say I've been consciously working with this for about a year now, although I, I've been meditating for many years, and I, I think there have been elements of this for, for a long time. But I started consciously working with this about a year ago. And what this really is, is it is a process of, as I've called it, deep feeling. But feeling into the body, feeling into the emotional body. And the only way I can really think to describe it is what starts to happen is as you start to feel into it deeply, you start to feel into the weight that you've been carrying, the accumulation that has built up. What starts to happen is I can only describe it as there's like an energetic release. And I experience it as in the beginning, it feels like kind of a tingling. And I'll feel it in my chest right here. I'll feel it like along the line of my shoulders a lot. I'll feel it going up the back of my neck. I'll feel it in my throat, in my face, in my head. Um, I've had, I've had like chronic headaches on the side of my head right here for, for many years. I mean, like at least like three or four years now, I've been getting these chronic headaches on the side of my head. And what, um, what I've been feeling as I've been working with this deep feeling practice, this uh, letting go practice, is I've actually been feeling the energetic release moving up my neck, like behind my ear into the side of my head here. And these headaches that I've had for years have gone away. And so... What I've, what I've realized as I've been getting more and more into this is that these, these traumas that I've really had since I was a little kid have in a very literal way been stored in my body. And I've been carrying them as like, as like a weight, right? As something that, and like, I want to explain just a little bit, like, why do we carry these, right? Why do we carry these traumas with us? And there's, there's a psychological element of this that we feel like by holding on to them, we will be able to better protect ourselves in the future, right? By, by holding on to this weight and by carrying this with me, I will be able to better protect myself. I will be able to better anticipate hurtful situations and, um, and preemptively like respond to them right now. I, I want to say like, there's, there's no real value in this. Like it doesn't actually do anything for me. All it does is limit me. All it does is hurt me. But psychologically, there's a feeling that holding on to this keeps me safe. And so we kind of automatically hold these things even though it does nothing for us, even though it doesn't support us in any real or meaningful way. So in talking about the practice itself, what does the practice look like? It's very simple, actually. And it is, it is so simple that you might not even believe me that this actually works. 
but it is so simple. And, and I, I want to say like when I started a year ago, my experiences with this were very mild, right? It was like, I would feel almost nothing or, or just maybe a little something. But as I have continued working with this, it has progressed to the point where I have had times where I've been practicing this and I will feel massive surges of energy moving through my body, like, like intense, like intense. Like I feel like I'm flying and like just feeling like a circular energy moving through my body in a kind of a cycle. And it, it, it goes to every single inch of my body and, and completely fills me. And it feels like this massive release and like this euphoric, I, I mean, the only way I could think to describe it is it's like highly energizing, euphoric, deeply relaxing, deeply healing. And so the way, the way this practice works, it's very, very simple, is you sit still like you would if you were going to meditate. And you could sit in a cross-legged position. You can sit with your feet on the floor. Uh, it's definitely helpful to have an erect spine. And close your eyes. Go inward. And simply ask yourself, what do I feel? And where do I feel it in my body? And anything will work. Anything will work, right? You can, you can think of any feeling or any sensation as like a little bit of a trailhead. And it's like leading you down the trail, right? And so just try to notice anything. And it's very interesting because you'll notice when you first start this, that we have become very, very conditioned to ignoring the things we feel in our bodies. We have become very conditioned to ignoring the things we feel in our bodies. And so when you really start to pay attention, you'll notice like, oh my God, I feel all kinds of things in my bodies, in my body that I was automatically disregarding without even realizing it. Because we have, we like our world is very mental and we live very much in our minds. And, and in a large sense, we're like disembodied. Like we're not really alive in our bodies. We're very much living in our heads, disconnected from our bodies. And like our intuition our higher guidance, our power, like all of that is actually found in our body, right? It's, it's like we, we feel into all of that through our bodies. And what's happened is we've become very mental. We live completely in our minds. We rationalize and think everything through in like a hyper rational way that keeps us disconnected from our bodies. And so if you could think about what's happening like this is every sensation that we feel in our body is it's kind of just repressed. It's kind of just automatically pushed aside. It's mentally categorized as unimportant. And then we take control of our realities in our minds and we try to figure everything out cognitively and we try to think everything through. And like, like you'll see this. I mean, I think dating is just one of the most beautiful ways to really see this happening, right? Where you, you come like most of us in dating, we completely disconnect from our intuition. We completely disconnect from our, from what our bodies are telling us because our bodies don't feel safe in dating, right? Our bodies feel very much in a reaction. Our bodies are very much in like a control resistance type thing. And so we, we avoid everything we're feeling in our bodies and we try to mentally control situations with our mind. And so we're thinking every situation through ruminating on every little detail, trying to figure it all out and rationalize it all. And what should I say? What should I do? What did I do wrong? What do I need to do better next time? How do I fix this? How do I resolve this? And all the while we're literally pushing aside all of the sensations in our bodies that would be our keys to freedom if we were willing to work with them and instead becoming hyper-focused in our mind. So the practice is to feel deeply into your body and actually get out of your mind and feel deeply into the body. So again, if you were to sit in a meditation seat, cross-legged, feet on the floor, it doesn't matter. Close your eyes, get comfortable, keep your spine erect, and ask yourself, what sensations do I feel in my body? And you want to look for like a little bit of a trailhead. You want to look for anything. It could be the smallest sensation, a little pain you have somewhere, a little tingling you have, maybe feeling a little bit sick to my stomach 
or maybe feeling a little bit tight in my chest, like a little bit short of breath, or maybe just feeling like a little bit of a movement of some kind. Like it could literally be anything. It doesn't matter what the sensation is, but you find any sensation in your body and you start to focus in on that sensation. And what will happen as you focus your attention in on that sensation is it'll start to get bigger. It'll start to grow. And what you want to feel into as you work with this is it really is like a process of letting go. It really is like a process of the tension that you're carrying, the heaviness that you're carrying. You just want to relax into it. You, or you, you want to kind of relax that tension, relax out of it. And so let's say, let's say I sat down. And I was feeling into this and I asked myself, what do I feel in my body and where do I feel it? And let's say maybe first thing I felt was like a little tightness in my chest, right? Like maybe I can't get a full deep breath. Like my breath is short or just kind of like a little, I don't feel completely relaxed. I feel like I'm holding on to something, whatever it might be. It, it could take any form, but let's say I feel that little tightness in my chest. And so I start focusing in on it and I would even breathe into that, right? So I'd be breathing into that place, wherever I felt it, if I felt it in my shoulders and my stomach or wherever I would breathe into where I feel that. And I would be consciously, I'm not pushing it. I'm not forcing it, but I'm allowing that sensation to grow, right? So there's actually a, it's kind of a relaxing of my will. See, we're so we're so addicted to our own willpower, and that's one of the biggest limitations in our lives. And so I, I, would be, I would be relaxing my own willpower and allowing the sensation to grow. And so I'm focusing my attention on the sensation. I'm not thinking about it. This is a big distinction. I'm not thinking about it. I'm observing it. Right. I'm, I'm watching it happen. I'm, I'm observing it. I'm not giving it a lot of thought. I'm just observing it and I'm breathing into it and I'm allowing it to get bigger on its own while I relax my own control over it. So my body, when I talk about relaxing my own control, what I'm talking about is I'm talking about relaxing that tension that I carry in my body. Right. So I'm relaxing the tension that I carry in my body. I'm allowing it to grow the sensation to grow and get bigger while relaxing the tension. And what will start to happen as you practice this? And like, I want to say the first time you practice it, you may not feel much. The first time you practice, you may just feel a sense of like finding those trailheads. Right. I'm just, I'm just finding those first little sensations and I'm, and I'm trying to focus in on them. And you might be very distracted in your mind. You might have a lot of thoughts. It might be, it might be tough to focus, right? Like, so you might, you might have to practice with this and work with this a little bit before you actually get good at it, before you actually can really allow the energy to flow. But as you practice with this and as you get better and better and better at it, these little trailheads that you find, will start to grow and evolve into big sensations. And you will start to feel these incredible releases of energy in your body. And you'll start to have all kinds of stuff come up. You'll have memories come up from places in your life that you had completely forgotten about. You'll have like things from your childhood that you had repressed are now coming up. There might be emotion that releases with it. So you might cry. You might, you might like, you might feel all kinds of things that you haven't been feeling in your life because, you know, what happened is, and again, there's, there's so many facets of this. It's hard to cover it all in a single episode, but what, what happened is when you were a child, Something happened that scared you. Maybe you were abused. Maybe someone came into your bedroom in the middle of the night. Maybe you were yelled at, or maybe you were shamed and told to go to your room, or, or you know, maybe you were humiliated by your friends, or I, I mean, like really all these different kinds of things happen, right? But when you felt that painful experience, it scared you. 
Like you were very little, the world was very big and you went, oh, and you went, oh, and you, and you tried to like protect yourself from it and your body tightened up around that experience. And, and what happened, and, and I've spoken a lot about this is, is like your ego, which your ego is the protective part of your mind. It's the part of you that's constantly trying to anticipate and, and protect yourself from pain. And so when you were very young, your ego kind of locked around that experience and it said, this is bad. We can't feel this. And it pushed it away and it locked it away somewhere. And you've been carrying that with you ever since. And now you might be a perfectly functional adult. You have a big life. Maybe you have kids, you have a job, you have a car, you have a house, you have bills, you got this big grown up life. And yet you struggle with anxiety all the time. And you're, and you're going like, I don't get it. Like, why do I have so much anxiety? What the fuck am I so afraid of? Like, why can't I just live my life? And you might think, well, it's about this. And, and you say, I just had this problem and I just need to solve this problem. And then my anxiety will go away. But then you might realize that like you solve that problem and then your anxiety just gets projected onto another problem and another problem and another problem. You might say, I'm just lonely. I just need to get into a relationship. But then you get into a relationship and then your anxiety just becomes about keeping that relationship, right? You're like, I couldn't handle being alone. I thought everything was going to be good when I got into a relationship, but then I got into a relationship and now I just obsess about keeping this relationship, right? Or... On and on and on and on and on. This can take endless forms. But if you're, if you're carrying things like anxiety or depression, if you feel like my life is just an endless series of problems and I fix one and another one pops up and I fix that one and another one pops up and I fix that one and another one pops up and I can just never really be at peace, right? I can never really feel at peace and safe and good inside of my own body. Because no matter what I do, I'm stressed out about something. Like if that is your experience, and I want to say, I know it is your experience, at least for a lot of you. And how do I know that? Because this is the human experience, right? This is what we all deal with. This is, this is what we need. Like when we talk about healing, this is what we need to heal from. This is the condition we need to heal from. The condition of constantly not being at peace and at home and safe within our own body. And so at some point in your life, your emotions got locked in time. Psychologically, you got locked in time to a degree. There's a little childhood version of you that never grew up in there that's still afraid of mommy and daddy punishing you or, or whatever, right? That still lives inside of you. And your body is carrying this tension around it that makes you feel very uncomfortable and very unsafe. And then when you get intimately involved with someone, Right. Let's say, you know, for a lot of you, and, and I know if you're listening to my podcast right now, like you're either seeking a relationship or you're interested in a relationship or you're in a relationship and you want to know how to make it work. Right. But what happens is when you get intimately involved with another person, all those traumas that you're carrying in your body become heightened. Because I've said this before, but your your intimate relationships reflect to you in a very, very specific way the same emotional experiences that you experienced when you were a child, right? And so you get, you get your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whatever, and you're moving on and you're getting closer and you're getting more intimate. And the same kinds of childhood fears that you struggled with with your parents when you were a little kid or with your teachers or with your classmates, those same kinds of childhood fears, the fear of rejection and abandonment and being left alone and not being important and not being enough and not getting approval and not being accepted, and not being loved and not being wanted, all of those childhood fears 
are going to be activated by the intimate situation that you're in with this person because that person has the same power over you that your parents had, that your teachers had, that your classmates had. Right, That when when you grow up and you become this big adult and you develop all these walls and all these defenses and all this security around yourself, that most of the people in your life, they don't touch that intimate part of you anymore. Right, You've learned how to deal with that. You've built all these elaborate structures around yourself to rationalize and protect and and justify and and make yourself look good. Like you've built all these defenses, right? So Most of your life, people don't touch that intimate, vulnerable part of you. But when you become truly intimate with someone, all those defenses become compromised. And now they get into the same part of you that most people haven't seen since you were a little kid. They're accessing that same vulnerable childhood part of yourself. And so this is when it becomes vitally important to learn how to let go, to learn how to release. Because I just want to, I just want to share this with you. And the reason I'm sharing this today is because like where I am in my life right now, I am, I am on the precipice of tackling some, some things that I have never touched into before. You know, I'm I'm celebrating seven years with my wife this month, or excuse me, next month, right? Seven years with my wife next month. So like I am touching into a level of relationship that I've never been to before, right? The stakes are higher than they have ever been before. Like we're, we're getting ready to start family. Like, Stepping into fatherhood, that's something I've never experienced before, right? The stakes are higher than they've ever been before. I am making some moves right now in my business and investing in my business on a level that I have never done before. The stakes are higher than they've ever been before. Not to mention I'm doing that at the same time that I'm starting a family, which just adds to it, right? So I'm sharing this because the reason I'm sharing this is that I am dealing with levels of anxiety that should be through the roof right now. That should be through the roof. Like I am tackling things I've never tackled before in my life. My anxiety should be through the roof. And yet right now I have more peace on a consistent basis than I've ever had before. And I attribute that 100%, maybe not 100%, maybe 90%. There are other things involved, but maybe I attribute 90% of that to this practice that I am sharing with you right now. This ability to tap in to what I'm feeling, recognize what I'm feeling, release it and let it go. The ability to let go and to stop accumulating. Whereas for most of my life, you know, we'd say first 25 years of my life, I had a traumatic childhood, extremely traumatic teenage years, like extreme trauma during those years. Then traumatic early adulthood. And I was taking all my fears and all my stresses and all my pain and all my suffering and just piling it on and carrying it with me. And then finally, finally, I learned how to release it. So as I was sharing, what you do is you sit still. You ask yourself, what am I feeling in my body and where do I feel it? You turn your attention away from your thoughts and to and towards your body. Now, this is similar to meditation. But the the practice, I would say, is slightly different where meditation doesn't have a strong emphasis on feeling. And this process that I'm teaching you here is all about feeling. It's all about feeling, right? So it's similar to meditation in that when, when you're practicing meditation, 
They tell you to observe your thoughts, let them pass. When you find yourself get caught up in a thought, you catch yourself and bring yourself back to your breath. Okay, this is very similar what I'm talking about. But instead of bringing yourself back to your breath, which is part of it, I do want you to breathe into the experience. But instead of bringing yourself back to your breath, you bring yourself back to your feeling, to the, to the sensation in your body that you are focusing on. So the idea is that you put all of your attention on some specific sensation in your body. You relax into that sensation, right? So you're letting go of anything inside of you that wants to control, that wants to hold on, that wants to tighten, that wants to resist, right? You're letting go of all of that. You're relaxing your physical body into the feeling that you're having. And you're allowing space for the feeling to get bigger and for the feeling to grow. It's, it's interesting because the, the tendency to want to tighten or to resist or to hold on, that is the very mechanism that limits the feeling, right? We've been doing that our whole life. We've been doing that our whole life. And, and that's why we do it, right? We, we do it to, because we, we feel something that's uncomfortable, like anxiety, like stress. We feel something that's uncomfortable and that feeling scares us and we go, oh, I don't want to feel that. And so we literally physically tighten and contract the muscles of the body to prevent that feeling from taking over. And what I'm talking about today is actually a practice of doing the exact opposite. You focus in on the feeling with your intention and you give that feeling permission to get bigger, to literally take your body over, right? Your whole life, you've been contracting and tightening to make that feeling smaller. Now you're doing the opposite. You're focusing and intending for that feeling to get bigger while relaxing all the muscles and the tension in the body. So you feel no resistance. If you're you're watching the video right now, I know those of you on the podcast won't see the video, but if you're watching the video, you'll see I'm actually like letting my arms down by my sides and opening my chest up and moving my shoulders back, right? It's like like I'm not offering any kind of resistance where resistance, I'd have like my arms up, like, like I wanna guard myself. No resistance. I am opening myself up fully to the feeling. I am giving it permission to take me over. Now, as I said, I've been working with this exact process for about a year now, and it has been profound for me. I have had profoundly moving experiences emotionally, energetically, just in the, in the kinds of sensations and the kind of releases I've experienced. They have been profound. But in the beginning, it didn't start that way. In the beginning, it didn't start that way. Okay, so there is going to be a practice of learning to observe the feelings, right? Learning to really recognize what am I feeling, where do I feel it, and being able to tune into that. That's part of it. The other part of it is learning to actually relax the body and feeling safe enough to do that and let the feeling take over. And you may not realize this, but you are carrying tension in your body right now, even if you feel relaxed. And you you might say, well, I don't feel like I have any tension. And some of you may, some of you may feel the tension in your body. And some of you may be like, "I, I don't feel like I have any tension. And what I want to say is most of the tension that we carry is actually unconscious. We've been carrying it for so long and it's, it's become so automatic and so like immediate that we've actually not, we don't know how to not carry that tension. And so, as I said, I've been practicing this for like a full year now and what I've learned as I've been practicing this 
is that I am able to relax tension today that a year ago I didn't even know what was I didn't even know it was there. And the the practice that I've been doing has little by little with each time I practice it allowed me to just go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. And I'm noticing things inside my body again that I didn't even know it was that I didn't even know was there. And I just I just want to give one example because when I when I noticed this for the first time it freaked me out. But I got so deep into this practice one time that I could literally feel my organs inside of my body like rubbing up against each other with each breath. So I would breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out. And I I could literally feel the organs inside my body, like kind of rubbing against each other with each breath. And I was like, holy shit, I've never felt that before. And it like, it it even freaked me out, like to realize I could actually feel that much of my body. And I'm sharing this to say, it's, it's not important that you feel that exact thing. It may or may not happen for you. But I'm sharing that to to show you how deep this can go when you really start allowing yourself to feel everything that's there. And it's like never ending. There's just so much. But the, the result that I've really gotten from this is, as I said earlier, being able to confront and go through some of the greatest challenges of my life and being able to do it in a state of complete peace without any anxiety. The reason this is so important, right? Like some of you might be listening to this and you might be saying like, well, this all sounds really interesting and that's all very good, but I, I really, I'd really just like some dating advice <laughs> or I would really just like to know like, you know, how to meet people or whatever. And I get that. And we all want that quick solution. But what I really want you to understand here is that this that I'm talking and teaching today is the most important piece of dating advice or relationship advice you will ever receive. Because if you can't, if you can't learn how to do this on your own, if you can't learn how to feel into those stuck places in yourself and release them and let them go, you don't have a chance at having a long-term successful relationship. You really, really don't. Because any relationship will activate that within you. And it's going to happen in dating. And if you get through the dating phase, it's going to happen in the early stages of commitment. And if you get through the early stages of commitment, it's going to happen in the deeper stages of commitment. And it just, like, it doesn't get easier as you go along. It actually gets more challenging as you go along. The stakes get higher as you go along. And so... In in a way, being able to do it while you're dating sets you up for that next stage and, and, and that stage sets you up for the next stage and so on. And if you can find peace in any situation you might find yourself in, you know, if you can take your anxiety your fear, your stress, your tension, and you can relax it and come into a state of ease inside your own body. No matter what's going on outside of you, like you will be able to navigate dating and relationships in a profoundly powerful way. And you honestly won't even need a lot of the advice that you think you do you'll actually see that all the advice that you thought you needed was already inside of you. It was just held down under a lot of fear and a lot of tension, a lot of stress. 
And then when all of that kind of moves through you and you're able to release it and let it go, there's a, there's a kind of intuitive awareness that happens where you, where you start to realize that like, oh, I know what to say right now. I know what to do right now. It just makes sense. It just clicks. It just connects. So that's the practice. And what I want to say is just start working with the practice. You know, um, if you want to try once a day, I, I found it works particularly good in the evening. You know, we accumulate a lot throughout the day. And just I'll share a couple of things about how it works for me, and then I'm going to take some questions. I've seen uh, many of you have, have sent in some questions, so I want to get in and, and take some of the questions. But I found that I don't do it every single day, and, and, and there have been times when I have. So I think you want to kind of find a rhythm that works for you. But what I found is I will naturally feel when things are accumulating for me, right? I'll just feel like it gets a little tight. I don't feel at ease. Maybe my mind is getting a little overactive. My mind is getting a little, you know, like I'm getting a little like kind of crazy or, you know, the feeling, right? When you, when your mind starts to think too much, you start to ruminate about things. Your body starts to feel a little tight. You don't feel at ease. You don't feel relaxed. So what I've, what I've been doing most recently is I've just been paying attention to how I feel every day. And when I feel that kind of tightness, that tension, I don't feel relaxed. I don't feel at ease. I feel that pressure building up. That's how I know it's time to practice. And the practice is really just feeling into it more deeply and more deeply and recognizing that I can go a little bit deeper each time and it's a little bit easier each time. And the more I work with this, the more opens up for me and the more it flows. And what I've noticed is in particular, when I've been feeling a little stressed and then I do this at night, I have like the most amazing sleep and I wake up feeling like totally refreshed. So that's, that's really what I want to share in regards to the practice. And, um, this is not an instant gratification kind of thing, right? Those of you who are looking for that quick fix or that easy answer, this is not what I'm offering you today. Um, what I am offering you is a practice that you can get started with now and it will completely change your life in every aspect. It will create a sense of ease and empowerment in every single aspect of your life, from dating to long-term relationships to career to whatever else. That is what I'm offering you, and that's what's available with this practice when you really learn how to do this. You know, I call this a superpower because there is nothing more powerful than being able to be at ease and at peace within yourself amidst the chaos of life. And that is, that is something that even the most high-powered people in the world largely have not been able to achieve. And it's something that I have recently been tapping into. I wouldn't say perfectly, right? I, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's been at a level that I've never experienced before. And it's been profound enough for me that I felt it important to dedicate an entire episode to it. So that's, uh, that's the practice. I want to go back through now and um, look into some of these questions. I've seen we have a lot of questions coming in here, and I want to take some time to speak into as many as I can. So I'm going to do that now. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. This question is from MT Gators, Michelle, um, asking how often do I engage in this practice? And I spoke into this a little bit earlier. Um, I would say if you're new to it, take some time every day. Um, and this could, you know, if you have a meditation practice, this could easily replace a meditation practice. But um, yeah, start with, start with practicing it every day. As you start to get more comfortable with it, you start to be able to feel into it more easily. It will, um, 
it will become it'll become more second nature where you can kind of feel when it's needed and when it's not right but i think definitely like starting with it every day because you've got to develop some you've got to develop some strength with it right like you've got to develop some confidence with it some awareness with it and really know know like how to work with it so that's just going to come through practice and and that's why i say like you know in the beginning when i first started learning how to do this i did it every day i was also going through a really challenging period in my life at that time so i think i just my anxiety was so high that i needed it every day um but yeah start with it every day because the more practice you get with it the more it will become like second nature the more you will naturally know how to feel into these things and so um yeah i i think that's that's what i'll say about that but but definitely you know as you develop kind of an intuitive sense about it and you really know like i'll say when you get there you'll know you're there right because you'll just it'll be like you sit down and you'll immediately start to feel all the sensations and you'll just kind of know exactly where to go with it but it, it does it takes time to get there so yeah start with just taking some time every day i saw another question down here someone was asking how much time does this take every day and um what i would say is that uh i mean honestly i've spent a lot of time with it i i've spent about 45 minutes a day working with it um it doesn't have to take that long like you could set aside 15 minutes a day just to start but the reason the reason i think taking more time it 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 works especially once you get deeper into it is because there's just really no end to this right like there's really no end to how deep you can go with it there's no end to how i mean what i feel is like after about 45 minutes or so and and sometimes i do spend that much time with it is i'll feel a sense of completion with it i'll feel a sense of like i've i've kind of moved everything that needed to move right i've kind of released everything that needed to be released at least for today not that there's not going to be something more tomorrow right but i'll feel a sense of completion and so i don't really time myself or put criteria on i need to sit for this long i usually just sit with it until i feel a sense of completion around it and i've noticed that has been taking about 45 minutes um but i would say if you want to start with 15 20 minutes just to start to learn the practice just to start to feel into it and then as it becomes more natural for you you can sit with it as long as you want to you can sit with it for a longer amount of time a shorter amount of time but uh yeah that's um that i think is is the practice so great questions and thank you for asking i want to read this comment um again i i don't know how to say your name um so I, i'm this is lisa 77 and i think i got that name wrong but i'm just going to go with it i'll keep working on it um she says my self worth and compassion gives me the power to accept the things that happen to me so i don't have to let go or but hold it differently does that make sense and so yes it it makes sense um what i hear in that is that you're adjusting your relationship with it right so it's like i don't i mean look this is something i've done for many years when we talk about reframing an idea where it's like i look at i look at how i was abused as a child and i see that i see that um you know me being abused as a child was actually something that has given me a lot of strength and courage and power and so rather than feeling like a victim to the abuse that happened as a child i now see that as something that empowered me or that does empower me and so i'm able to hold it differently um i i don't know if if that's what you're saying but it sounds like that's what you're saying Um I did that for a lot of years that kind of work and that is that is more of a mental reframing right but if you remember like I I spoke in the beginning about how we're very mental and we try to control everything through our minds that is a 
that is a healthy mindset strategy, what you're talking about there, right? So I, I look at I look at something that happened in my past. I don't let that thing go, but rather I learn to hold it differently. I have a better relationship with it. That empowers me. That is a healthy mindset strategy being able to reframe your past experiences in a way that empower you moving forward. So yes, that is a healthy mindset strategy. But what I'm talking about here is something completely different because I'm not talking about mentally reframing it in a way that you see it differently or understand it differently. That's still just happening on the level of mind. I'm talking about something that happens on the level of body and energy. And look, I, I spent a lot of years thinking that I could control everything or thinking that I could have power over everything by mentally reframing it, right? Like, and I did that with every area of my life. And I was like, I'm not a victim, I'm accountable. And I take responsibility for all areas of my life. And it doesn't matter what happened to me. It only matters how I see what happened to me. And as long as I see it clearly and I can move forward with a positive perspective, I'm going to be powerful. And that worked for me in a lot of domains of my life. But what happened was I got to a place in my life where my anxiety was really high and, and my, my stress was really high and no amount of mentally reframing the situation really helped me with that. Right? So, so this is where this is where you've got to recognize that it's not just about seeing it differently in your mind. That's a great thing to do. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That's a great thing to do. But unless you are, unless you are releasing the energetic impressions that you are carrying in your body, you can only go so far with mentally reframing it. And I'm also not saying that like, emotionally and energetically releasing is a substitute for mentally reframing. I think you really need to do both, right? You need to mentally understand your past in a way that empowers you moving forward in the future. And you also need to release the energetic impressions that are carry that you are carrying in your body. Like, how do I put this? It's like, You've got to understand that there, that one level of our reality is the mental aspect of it, right? Like one level of our reality is the mental aspect of it. The way we think about things, the way we understand things, the way we interpret things, the way we make sense of things, the way we understand life, the way we connect the dots and draw conclusions, right? That's the mental aspect of our life. But that aspect kind of lives in its own world. And aside from that, we are animals, right? Like we are animals. Like we have a certain evolutionary process. We, we are at the mercy of like uh, certain conditions that are shaping our physical reality, meaning that we have, we have fear-based responses. We have fear-based responses that trigger certain mechanisms inside of our body that are based on survival. And the way that we deal with those responses is, is by tightening our bodies, right? And so there's, and our bodies are made of energy. So when you, when you restrict the energy of the body, you lock things in place. And so, yes, the mental aspect of this thing, changing your perspective on it, understanding things in a, in a healthier way, that is very important work to do. But it's not a substitute for working with the energetic and emotional impressions that are stuck in the body, right? Both of these things need to happen. So I'm looking at some of your comments here and... I just, I see you commenting on what we're talking about. Um, you see everything that happened to me. I embrace it because I learned a lot from it. That's beautiful. I use my experiences to mature and, and how self-aware I become to inspire others. That's beautiful. 
Sometimes bad experiences force you to become a better person. That's beautiful. I agree 100% with everything that I'm saying or, or, or with everything that you're saying. I agree 100% with it. But I don't, I don't know if you're understanding that I'm talking about something different here. So yes, everything you're talking about is amazing. I've been practicing that and teaching that for years. It is amazing, important work to do. But I'm talking about something that is happening outside of your conscious awareness, right? You've been doing all this work, reframing things, understanding them in a helpful way. But underneath that, there is the animal evolutionary part of you that is, that is designed to survive. And it is having its own experiences of life, regardless of how you think about it. And what I have found is that that evolutionary survival-based part of us, if we don't work with that as well, you can positive think all day and reframe situations all day and you know have the best perspective on everything in your life. And it'll only take you so far. Because you're going to reach, you're going to reach certain points in your life where your, your mind is saying, I've got this positive thinking. I can reframe this. I can understand this in a positive light. And your body is saying, I can't handle this. And so when you reach that place, if you don't know how to energetically release the resistance that's in your body, you're going to be stuck. And so again, it's not that one is better than the other or one is more important than the other, but it's that both are really necessary. And my program inspired love, which I spoke a little bit about earlier, but my program inspired love. There's a reason that in the program, what we do is we work with all four dimensions of the human experience, which is body, mind, emotion, and spirit, right? We work with all four of these because in, in my experience, healing really needs to take place in all four of these domains. If you're, only, if you're only healing one of them, but not the others, then you're not becoming a fully integrated individual. So that's, um, yeah, that's, that's what I found around that. And thank you for your questions and your sharing. That's Really awesome, and I appreciate you sharing that. Um, all right, let me just scroll through here and see what else we got. Um, I want to, Michelle Dawn has a question here. She says, I am doing so much better sitting with my feelings, breathing and processing them, but how do I take it to the next level and really find the root of my anxiety and name the trauma? Okay, beautiful question, Michelle. And I appreciate you asking this because, again, this is not a mental process that I'm talking about here. You don't have to name the trauma. You don't have to find the root of it. That is all mental stuff. Okay, so that's more what we were just talking about of thinking back to what happened when I was a child and, you know, really understanding it in a new light. And how did that bad experience shape me? And how can I become empowered because of that? Okay, that's all mental work which is important work to do. But what we're talking about here is a process of energetic and emotional release. It's letting go the energetic impressions that got stuck inside your body. This is not something you have to think about. This is not something you have to rationalize. This is not something you have to get logical answers to. And this is actually, I, I want to... Like, it's so simple, what I'm talking about right now. It is so simple that most of our egos can't handle it because we think it needs to be more complicated. And if we don't have an elaborate, rational answer, we think it's not real or it's not important. And that just shows how unintelligent our egos actually are because our egos only really deal with, like, our egos, our egos try to control everything at the level of the mind, and it assumes that what's happening at the level of the emotions or the body is unimportant. And so when you say I'm doing so much better sitting with my feelings, breathing and processing them, that's really all you need to do. So finding the root, naming the trauma, I mean, look, 
that I'm not saying that's not helpful. Like if you want to do that, like that's the kind of stuff you would do with a therapist. So maybe like getting a good therapist would be the best place to like find what's the root of my trauma. Where did all of this start for me? But therapy really largely operates on the level of mind, unless you get a good somatic therapist who can help you work on the level of body, right? Somat that's what somatic therapists do. But what you're saying, sitting with my feelings, breathing into them, processing them, right? So again, the way you do this is you find a comfortable place to sit, you sit still, spine erect, close your eyes, breathe into the feeling. And so you would ask yourself, what am I feeling and where do I feel it? Right? I often, for me, I often feel it like right here on the tops of my shoulders, like this line right here. I often feel a lot of tension right there. I'll often feel it like right here in my chest. I'll often feel it in my throat. I'll often feel it in my jawline, in my face. I, I shared that I've had like chronic headaches on this side of my head, right? So I'll often feel it like going up into this side of my head. So these are, these are some of the areas that, you know, I feel it often, or you might feel it. You could feel it in other ways too. You could feel it in your feet, you feel it in your knees. You could feel it in your stomach, in your, you know, your intestines, like in your root, like you could feel it in all different places. It doesn't matter where you feel it. What matters is noticing where you feel it. And so you say, what am I feeling and where do I feel it? And then you identify a particular sensation in your body. You say, I feel kind of sick to my stomach. And so you start to focus in on that sensation. And again, your mind is going to think about it. Why do I feel sick to my stomach? Maybe it was something I ate. Maybe it was my workout at the gym. Maybe it was blah. You don't worry about that, right? You just, you, you bring your attention back to the feeling. I don't need to mentally understand why I feel this. I don't need to name this or give it an answer. I just need to feel it completely and feel it fully. And so what will start to happen as you relax your body and as you feel into the experience and you release the tension and you get out of your head and you stop rationalizing the experience and you're just paying attention to what you're actually feeling, which, which by the way, I just want to say rationalizing it, thinking about it consciously suppresses the feeling. So you've got to pull your attention out of your thoughts and put it onto the feeling. When you start thinking about it, you're going to suppress the feeling. So you're looking at the feeling, you're breathing into it, you're allowing it to grow, you're allowing it to get bigger, you're relaxing your body more and more. The more you relax your body, the more the feeling naturally grows. It'll start to feel like movement. If it started in your stomach, maybe you'll feel it moving down into like your pelvis. Maybe you'll feel it moving around into your back. Maybe you'll feel it moving up into your chest, right? It, it may feel like a, a pressure. It may feel like a tingling sensation. It may feel like a vibration. It may feel like pins and needles. It, like, it could feel like these different things. But what you're looking for is for the sensation to grow, to get bigger, and to move. And what I will often experience if I sit with it long enough and I say, I said earlier, sometimes it takes me about 45 minutes to feel a sense of completion with this. But if I feel it, if I sit with it long enough, what I will often feel is no matter where it was in my body, and I might often feel it in different places too, like it might start in my chest and then it might move into my pelvis and then I might feel it in my back. And, and so like as, as it grows, I might feel it starting to show up in different places in my body too. But if I sit with it long enough, what I've noticed is it all kind of comes together and it all just kind of moves up and out. And it just moves right up through, through my head, through the top of my head and kind of out and just releases. And as I've said, it'll often take about 45 minutes to feel that all of it moves from everywhere in the body and it moves up and out. And I'm left with just this incredible sense of being relaxed, being at peace and being at ease. And it'll stay with me for several days sometimes. 
like it will it'll often stay for a while and then what i'll start to feel little by little is i'll, I'll start to feel that accumulation building up again and it'll feel like a heaviness, a tension, a tightness. It'll feel like my mind being a little more crazy, right? My thoughts being a little more rapid, me being a little more reactive, me being a little bit more afraid or not so trusting, not so relaxed about life and the way things are going, right? And so when I start to notice all of that happening within myself, that's kind of a trigger for me. Okay, it's time to release again. Now, in terms of the mental work, which was brought up earlier, I want to say that's something I do all the time, right? So if I have, if I have, let's say just a fear about my business come up, right? Or a fear about money or a fear about something in my relationship or something, right? So I will, and I've trained myself to do this over the years. I will immediately reframe that, right? So what will I do? Well, I'll tell myself, okay, let's say I have a fear about money or something, right? Like I'm going to run out of money. Right. Well, okay. Well, I'll, I'll look and I'll go, okay, well, you know, how much money do I have right now? Do I have enough? Yes, I have enough to pay my bills this month to keep a roof over my head. Okay. So there's enough money. I'm not in any immediate danger. That's the first thing I do. Second thing I do is I say, okay, you know, how many ways are there for me to make money in the next few months? And I'll just start to mentally categorize. Okay. I could do it like this. 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 Right. So then, then I start to say, okay, so there, there are ways to, to make money. Right. And then I'll start to say, okay, so, you know, what do I have coming up? And I'll just, I'll like just quickly, and and this takes me all of maybe two minutes to just sit there and like talk myself through the fear. Right. So there's a mentally reframing that's happening. A scarcity comes up. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not going to have enough money. What am I going to do? Okay. Then I'm able to take that, reframe it, move from a scarcity model to an abundance model. You could do the same thing with dating right? Oh, I'm talking to this person and I'm afraid they're going to reject me. Okay. Got it. You're afraid they're going to reject you. Well, let's, let's just look at that for a moment, right? Well, well, maybe they, maybe we've been texting and they haven't responded to a text message in a few hours and I'm getting a little freaked out about that. Right. And I'm starting to feel the pressure building and feel the tension. So mentally I'm going, Oh my God, they're going to ghost me. I'm never going to hear from them again. They're going to reject me. And so how might I mentally reframe that for myself? Well, I might just go, okay, well, look, you know, I didn't know this person two weeks ago. If I don't know them two weeks from now, it's not that big of a deal. My life will go on, right? That might be the first thing. Then the second thing I might say is, you know, it's only been a couple hours. People have busy lives. You know, they'll probably get back to me when they have time and I don't really need to worry about it, right? I'll, I'll give them space to get back to me in their own time. I'm going to focus on my own life and my own things that are important to me and it'll come back around when it works out and I don't really need to worry about it, right? That might be the second thing I say. Third thing I say might be like, look, worst case, if this doesn't work out, The same way this person came into my life, someone else could come into my life. And if this person wants to ghost me, then they're not really the right fit anyway. And there are lots and lots of great people out there. And like, I meet, I meet new people all the time. So like, I don't really need to worry about this. Right. So I might just talk myself through that. And I might just quickly, in a matter of a couple of minutes, bring myself from a scarcity model into an abundance model where I am mentally viewing the situation as though it's all good. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to be stressed about, right? But then what's happening alongside of that mental game that's going on is there is an energetic and emotional buildup that's happening where my abandon... Okay, Bubba, I want you to go on the floor, okay? Thank you. Where my abandonment wounds from the past are coming up and being triggered right? Where my, where my fear of rejection and how it feels to be left alone and like all of that stuff is coming up, right? So that is the buildup in the body. And this is all unconscious. So these aren't things I'm rationally thinking about. This is stuff that is coming up in my body as the, my life experience is triggering old stuff. And there's an accumulation that is built up in the body. And it feels like a pressure. It feels like a tightness. It feels like I'm not safe. It feels like I need to avoid. And so that, that is what we need to let go of. I'm not saying you need to let go of the thoughts or the memories or any of that. I'm saying you need to let go of the actual energetic accumulation that's happened in the body. And so if we go back to the example I just had where you're texting somebody and they haven't texted back in a few hours and your anxiety is starting to build up. Well, yeah, you would want to first mentally reframe it and just kind of talk yourself through it. But then the next thing you would want to do is really ask yourself, what am I feeling around this right now? 
And you would want to do that work to release the accumulation that is building up inside your body so that by the time that person texts you back, you feel at ease, you feel at peace, you feel comfortable, you feel content, and then you can respond to that person from that place rather than responding to that person from your wounding. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, thank you for the question, Michelle. Beautiful question. And thank you for sharing. Um, just reading uh, this comment from Pink Mustache. <laughs> Um, agree with everyone, yet I still feel it manifest in my body in an unhealthy way and excited to practice what you shared today to release what my body is carrying. Yes, freaking love that. Start practicing. Just work with it. Just work with it, right? Just work with it. And, you know, it, again, it may take time. It may take some time to familiarize yourself with how to feel into this, but just give it a little bit of time every day. It will, the more you practice with it, the more and more deeply you'll be able to go into it, the more sensations you will notice and the more you will start to feel a very real release happening inside your body. So beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, oh, so Belazima is asking, how long did it take you to heal all four? And I'm, I'm assuming you're asking about body, mind, emotion, and spirit, right? Well, <laughs> that's a great question. And I, I want to say healing is not a linear thing. Right. It's not like I go from here to here and then I wasn't healed here and now I'm healed here. Um, as I've shared, you know, I might feel like I've completely released it and I'm completely at ease and I'm completely comfortable and I have the best sleep of my life and I wake up refreshed. And then 48 hours later, I feel the accumulation building up again. You've got to recognize that the stimula of life. Stimuli, 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 I don't know, whatever the right word is there. Um, I think it's stimuli. The stimuli of life, you being stimulated by life, whether it's in dating, in interpersonal relationships, at work, around money, around your career, around, uh, you know, progress in whatever way, right? Like all of the stimulation we receive around life creates accumulation. There you go. Stimulation creates accumulation, right? So when things are stimulating you, the things you see on television, the things you hear in music, you're, you're scrolling on social media and you see a picture of somebody and you go, why don't I look like that? And you start comparing yourself to people or whatever, right? All of this is stimulation and all of it creates accumulation. And so healing is not something that you do and then you're done. Yes, to a large sense, you can resolve a lot of your early childhood wounds. You can resolve a lot of your past pain and trauma, and, and you can like come to terms with it. And from that place, you will be much more healed in your life overall. But the practice that I'm talking about here is something you need to do consistently, right? Because as the accumulation builds, you need to release it. It's like the pressure builds up and then you let the pressure out and then you're good. And then you life for a few more days. And as you're going around lifing, the accumulation builds up and then you got to release it. And so it's about constantly bringing yourself back to the state of ease, the state of being relaxed, the state of being at peace, the state of being at, at, at ease and comfortable and at home and safe within your own body. And so, yeah, it's not something that you, it's not something that you do and then you're done. It's something that, you know, you, you need to continue doing. And so you're asking me, how long did it take me to heal all four? Well, let me put it this way. I would say about five years into my healing journey, I had, I had made a lot of ground. 
you know, I was delivering seminars from the stage. I was coaching a lot of people. I was, I was creating a lot of results in my own life. You know, this is when I met my wife and we started our relationship. This is when I started making huge leaps in my career. So, you know, I'd say within five years of like starting my healing journey, I, I started making major leaps in a lot of these areas. So we could say I maybe healed to a large degree in that sense. Um, now I'm about 10 years in, right? I'm about 10, 11, 12, something like that. So now being on the other side of this, you know, being many more years into it, I found that it's just getting deeper. It's not that, it's not that I'm done, but I, I would say like things don't really bother me as much as they used to. And I would say that when things do bother me, I've gotten really good at using the tools that I've learned. And so it's not that I'm done healing, I'm complete, I'm enlightened. It's not like that. But it's it's more that I've gotten really good at using these tools. And now I'm able to take them like deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And so I'm able to see things within myself that I haven't seen before. I'm able to make connections that I've never made before. I'm able to understand things on a level that I haven't understood before. And I don't know that that'll ever stop happening. Like, I mean, the way I understand life from a spiritual sense is like, we just keep doing it. So, you know, when this life ends, we move on to another experience and that other experience is you know, maybe going to be similar to this experience, but different. And we're going to, we're going to be learning on a different level, right? So, so here in this reality in, in these bodies, in this world, in these kinds of relationships, right? We are learning in a very specific way. This, this type of framework gives us a very specific context for learning and for working with things. And then on the next level, when we, you know, again, after we die and we move on to whatever's next, I think we'll be in a different kind of framework that is not like this one, but is maybe similar to this one in some ways. And that will provide different kinds of opportunities for learning and for growth. And I think it just goes on and on and on and on and on infinitely. I don't think there's, I don't think there's any level to how great we can become or how far our expansion and our experience can go. I, I think it's never ending, right? But but I, I guess if you want to move on to those higher levels, then the thing to do is to really master this level here, right? Like that's that's the gateway into the higher levels. And one thing I'll say about that, this is getting into more of like an esoteric type spiritual conversation. But since we're going there, let's just go all the way. Um, on this level, we learn through suffering, right? Uh, the, the Buddha said this, life is suffering, right? And, and so in this level, we all experience suffering. We all experience challenge. There's not a single life form in this world that does not experience challenge and suffering as a part of their life experience. And so in this in this reality, in this framework we're operating in now, suffering and challenge are the tools through which we grow. I think there are levels beyond this one that are all light and bliss, where we don't have the kinds of fears and challenges and struggles that we have in this reality. And the way we attain that kind of state is by mastering the curriculum that we have right here and now, working with challenge and suffering. And what I've been teaching today in this process is really a, a process of releasing suffering. It's a process of letting go of suffering. Belazima is asking another question. She says, would it be the same as doing cardio or yoga? And um, my answer to that question is no, it, it, it is not the same. Um, I think, and I said earlier, like I, I'm a yoga teacher and I, I both, I run as well. 
And I don't think doing cardio or yoga is, is the same at all as what I'm talking about. I do want to say that yoga, because of the nature of it, um, you know, the, the asana and the poses, um, yoga has the ability to get into the body and kind of make some of those releases or shake up some of that energy. Yoga does have the ability to do that. But I think, and this is why, you know, at the end of every yoga practice, you do a Shavasana and Shavasana is corpse pose where you, it's, it's, you lay down, it's basically like a meditation. And most, you know, when you go to a yoga class, they, they really only do Shavasana for a few minutes, if that. And it's, it's not really a great Shavasana, but they, they say that Shavasana is the most important pose. And I think the reason it's the most important pose is because it's your opportunity to do what I'm talking about right here, right? So yoga can definitely work to get into the body, into the fascia, into some of this locked up, tied up, tightened up parts and loosen that up and release some of that. And that's also why a lot of times emotion will come up while doing yoga, right? A lot of people have very strong emotions uh, surface while doing yoga. So yoga has that ability, but you need that meditative period afterwards to actually go into the body in the way I'm talking about here. So that's really what Shavasana is for. And so if you do a yoga practice and then at the end of your yoga practice, you lay down in Shavasana and you let you let the uh, you let yourself tune into what you're feeling in your body, and you tune into the release that's happening. Um, yes, yoga in that sense could be the same thing. And and I'll say like even after a regular yoga class, I've had massive hits of intuition while laying in shavasana. I've had massive like clarity and freedom. So I, I think yoga does work to a degree. But I would say definitely the process I'm speaking about here is, is its own thing. And it's very specific. And I, I would say it's worth practicing in addition to a normal yoga practice. Um, but great question. Great question. Okay. I want to, I want to speak into Natty Strick here because, um, you're sharing some, you're sharing some things that I, I think are very relevant. And I want to just speak into them. And I'll, this will be the last one for today. Um, Natty Strick says it's hard when there are guys who just want to chat and nothing else. And if a date is set up, it's clear that they just want a night out and no more. I'm, I'm clear that everyone is not like that, but it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I wanted to speak into this Natty and I really appreciate you bringing this up because you're talking about some of the very real realities of what we're confronting in the dating world right now, right? And, you know, people who just want to chat and nothing else, people who just want to night out and no more, right? And so these are, these are the kinds of things that you're going to confront in the dating world. And I, I get that it sucks. Like, it's disappointing when you, when you want one thing and you're having to confront the opposite of what you want, right? Like that is disappointing. That is disheartening. That is frustrating. That is an emotional thing to go through. And what I want to say in, in regard to today's topic is that if you are carrying the weight of that frustration and that disappointment, day after day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, it's going to prevent you from getting closer to what you're looking for, right? Like you're saying you want someone who wants more than just to chat or just have a night out, right? You're looking for someone who wants to be intimate, who wants to have a relationship, who wants to build a life with you, who wants to be a partner, right? You're looking for someone who wants the full package. And so if you are carrying this tension and this tightness and this resistance inside of you, it's going to make every trigger more intense. It's going to make all of your experiences heightened. It's going to make your reactions like 
It's going to make you highly reactive. It's going to have you lose your peace constantly. And if that's, if that's the position you're in, where you are constantly frustrated, constantly disappointed, constantly let down, constantly disheartened, if you have no peace or safety inside of your being, if you're always feeling the stress and this tension of things not going the way you want it to, then like the sad truth is that nothing is going to change for you. And it's going to be so important for you to learn how to release this tension that you're carrying in your body so that you can handle these experiences. Like, look, I'm not, I'm not saying that dating is easy. I'm not saying just go out and find someone and have a good time doing it and it's easy, right? Like, no, I'm saying I get that it's hard. I get the frustration of it. I get the disappointment of it. I get how disheartening it can be. I get how miserable it can be to invest time with someone and then have them ghost you. Like, I get that. I know how challenging it is. Like, I literally, this is what I do for a living, right? Like, I know how challenging it is. And that's why I'm sharing these tools with you. Because if you try to do this, if you try to, you know, go find that, Without having these tools and knowing how to use them, it's not just going to be hard, it's going to be impossible. Like, so what I'm sharing is I'm sharing the tools that will allow you to succeed. And it's going to be so important that no matter how disappointed you are, no matter how frustrated you are, no matter how much you've gone through whatever and we've all been through a lot it's going to be so important that you find a way to get to that peace and that ease inside of yourself to feel safe inside your own body to feel comfortable to feel confident and good about yourself because if you can't get to that place the chances of meeting your ideal partner and living happily ever after are slim to none. And I, I hate to say it that way, but it's the truth. Like dating, dating is hard enough when you feel good. If you don't feel good, you have no chance. And so what, what, I, what I want you to take from this is really an opportunity to release everything inside of you that is a limitation. To release everything inside of you that is holding you back. This is a real practice that you can start working with now. And if you work with it now, a year from now, you will be in touch with places inside of yourself that you didn't even know were there before. And you will have released incredible amounts of tension and fear and reactive reactivity that are keeping you stuck. So I just want to encourage everyone to take that opportunity for yourself. And as always, I'm sending you so much love on this journey. I know it is not an easy one, but listening to this podcast means that you're in the right place to to actually succeed in this journey. And I'm grateful to be here with you in that. So Uh, So much love to everybody. Thank you for being with me today. Um, I do want to just quickly do one more shout out regarding the Inspired Love Program before we close out. So many of you have heard about the program. Um, I've talked about it many times, but what I want to um, what I want to share is that we have recently gone through a an incredible renovation on the program. We have taken it from a three-month program to a lifetime program. We have just vastly improved all the resources that are available under the program. Um, You will have access to the coaching sessions for as long as you want to attend them. You will have access to things like breath work and workshops and somatic processes and all like you're, um, you're just going to have access to so much and there's going to be so much more value available in the program. And if you sign up before October 1st, we do have an early bird special available where you can literally save 50% on the tuition of the program. 
we don't often do discounts. Um, you know, we don't often do, uh, you know, we don't, we don't often cut the price of the program in any way. The program is, is what it is and that's what it is. But, um, we're doing this because we're so excited about the, um, the, the new program that we're unfolding and, and everything that's going to be added in it. And we really want to give some people the opportunity to get in um, on the front end of it and take advantage of all the resources that are going to be, be available there. So that's why we're doing this. Again, we don't do discounts. We don't do specials on the program. This is probably going to be a one-time thing. Um, but with the early bird special, you'll be able to save 50% on the tuition of the program. And um, I would just say, you know, if you've wanted to work with me, this is the best way to do it. And this is the best time to do it. So um, if you're interested, go ahead. Um, you could just shoot me a DM on Instagram. Just let me know you're interested and you want the details and we'll, we'll uh, get things set up for you. If you are listening on the podcast and you're interested, just shoot me an email. You can shoot that at shaneandfatima at thelivingrelationship.com. That's Shane and Fatima, all spelled out S-H-A-N-E-A-N-D-F-A-T-I-M-A at thelivingrelationship.com. Um, shoot me a DM on Instagram or shoot me an email. Let me know that you're interested and we will get all the details to you. And again, um, this is, you know, the only time you're going to be able to get a discount on the program. And, uh, it's definitely worth looking into if, if you wanted to work with me this year. So, so much love to everyone. Thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, really always a pleasure to be here and I'll be back with you next Tuesday. Much love, many blessings, everybody. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye. Thanks again for checking out the show. Please subscribe on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on the most. And I would love it so much if you'd leave a review and tell people what you think of us. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at The Living Relationship to connect more closely. And I'm grateful to be supporting you on your journey to love.